What's going on, man? It's TP. You here with your boy Ju. I'm here with my good boy, my good friend right here. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Good, good, good. Um, we got a new voice joining us today. Special guest, man. Special, special guest. guest. Special. Let's clap it up for her real quick, real quick, real quick. We're gonna clap it up for her. <laughs> yeah, you wanna give her a little intro? You wanna you wanna go ahead and bring her in, man? Yeah, man, I'll go ahead and do the honors, man. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, bro. You know it's Black History Month, man. And you yes, know, it is. We wanna like highlight, you know, people that's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doing great things, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, empowerment is important. Mm-hmm. Black entrepreneurship, and and mm-hmm. we lucky, we lucky, we lucky, <laughs> we lucky to have someone I consider a friend here today. Yes, sir, Brittany. Hey, give her a little hand. Let's, let's give it. Let's give a little. Let's give it a little bit more, man. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Wow, that was a great intro. I <laughs> you know, I try. I don't intro many people, so I try. Hey, I feel very honored. <laughs> no problem, I feel empowered. Man. I feel like I can take over the world after that. One. Yes, yes. Actually, I feel like I'm not applying enough pressure to live up to that. But, hey. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, you do, man, you do enough. Uh, and and Brittany, I just want to say thank you for coming on to the show, man. Um, from what I hear, man, you are very. Uh, you have a go getter spirit, you know what I mean? Somebody that has a goal and they go achieve it. And I think that's one of the main things that attracted us to having you on the show is that, you know, we here in we here in Black History Month, right? And the emphasis is so much on the past and so much on what's been done. Mm-hmm. That sometimes we forget about what's being done currently. You know what I mean? And yeah. there's a lot of things that's mm-hmm. embodying what a what a modern you know what I'm saying, progressive, like, achieving young, you know, man or woman is doing, and you embody right. a lot of it. You know what I'm saying? And so Ed brought it to me. I'll just tell you how, how this came about. Ed brought okay. it to me. He was like, you know, we should get on here. We should we should get Brittany. And I was like, yeah. He was like, bro, she do her own little her, She do her hair things. You know, a lot of people in the city, uh, he's actually been able to watch you grow, you know what I'm saying, go from stage to the next stage, next stage. He said we should get on here, give her a chance to tell her story. That's like, hell yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, because I feel like, I feel like people just don't get highlighted enough. Like regular people, like, though. yeah. It's, and okay, we say yeah. regular, but it's like it's unappreciated because people go through a journey to get to where they at. They didn't just right. wake up one day and mm-hmm. be who they are. Yeah, exactly. And like I feel like you don't get to hear people's stories that much, and this mm-hmm. can be inspiring. And that's why I wanted to have you on here too, so you can just kind of. You know, tell people your story and how you came about to be where you are now, you know, because you didn't just get there. It's a journey. And I feel like mm-hmm. when people know the journeys and not just, you know, once the, the name, they can like understand it and they yeah. can feel attainable to them because now it's like, oh, OK, yeah. well, that's how she started. OK, I can start doing that rather mm-hmm. than, you know, you see just the big people. You, you just think, see the end result. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. How yeah. do I get to be a, a yeah. arrogant tape? <laughs> right. <laughs> It's right. like nah, it's like <laughs> steps he had to do to get there, and I feel like people don't highlight those steps enough mm-hmm. to like help mm-hmm. people realize. Oh no, I can start here and then get there, and like because mm-hmm. some people don't know how to start. Because I know a lot of women that like want to do hair, but they like I don't know where to start or like or it just start off as like a freestyle thing. You know what I mean? Know, like mm-hmm. it's like people have aspirations to do things, but they just don't be knowing where to start. And mm-hmm. you know that's what we kind of wanted to uh, talk to you about today is just like your journey and how you ended up getting to where you got. So I guess like. My first question for you would be like, when did you start doing hair? Okay, so like when I really started doing hair, it's kind of a long story, y'all. Come on, we, we on the podcast. I was say, we got yeah, so yeah, 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 the long story. Yeah, we got the long story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we ain't got another um, time. So actually, um, my grandmother was a beautician. Okay, um, okay for sure. Um, my, I have a cousin that does hair. Uh-huh. I have another cousin that worked in the salon. I had another cousin who was a, a instructor. Mm-hmm. So growing up around that, and um, like as a child, my grandmother had a shop in the in the den. Okay. So I mean, on mm-hmm. Saturday mornings, I would wake up and see it, and so I was always influenced about that. I was like, oh wow, mm-hmm. and okay. like I was like, okay, well let me see what I can do. And so when mm-hmm. I was young, I taught myself how to do braids. I was like in the third grade, taught myself how to do braids. Scalp. Scout. Oh, actually, actually, it's a difference. It's a difference. Right. It's a difference. Yeah. Actually, Everybody was, can't do that. Uh-uh. How I learned was it was a it was a Girl Scout book, huh. and well, they yeah. were teaching you how to do French braids. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, if I can do the French braid, I can do the cornrow. Yeah. Hmm. So I just was like, I'm gonna keep practicing how they was telling me how to do the French braid. Uh-huh. And eventually, I was like, I'm gonna keep on doing it, keep on doing it. Mm-hmm. And eventually, my cousin who does hair. She got me a mannequin, and that's and I, it was over after that. So mm. I, was, I just started practicing mm. doing hair. Mm. Um, and so fast forward, actually, um, 
I got my license in high school. So okay. you, I'm gonna say, so you was doing hair throughout, like all throughout, grade, like in high school, stuff. like you know, it was I like was a side hustle for you. Side hustle. I never really had a job. I mean, I well, uh, I'm a hustler. Yeah, so for I sure. always kept a job. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the side, I've always done hair. Like okay. Okay. anybody okay. who know me from high school, college, they know. Oh, you're talking about Brittany who does hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I used to be cold with the micros. <laughs> oh, yeah. micro braids. Tell you how long I've been doing hair. Man, what the I'm time. Say that micros that was, was wild when you look at that. That's a time stamp. That's a time stamp. It's a time stamp. Yeah. Yeah. But that was a thing. Yeah. It was. Everybody was. went around with them. Mm-hmm. And I remember they took forever. And it did. Yeah. And that's when I realized, okay, I got to let this go. I got to find another service. But We'll get into that later on. Okay, for sure. for sure. So that's how you got started off. Yeah, growing up in the beauty shop. That's how so I got you was started. always kind of like around it, you I know, was, seeing all your family and stuff. Do yes, it. I was born into it. So mm. I was like, why not? Okay, yeah. so my question, when you got to that time in life where you was a senior in high school, college, do hair, like was it ever like you just wanted to exclusively do hair from then or you knew you wanted to go to school? Um. Well, actually, fun fact, um, when I got ready to get accepted into the cosmetology program as a junior, my parents and my grandmother basically told me, oh, you can do this. We'll pay for this, but you have to go to college. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so with that in the back of my mind, and not to say that was nothing wrong with that. I understand it now. Yeah. Um, but I always wanted to go to college. Okay. To be honest, at 18 or 19, I never thought that I would be a full-time hairstylist. Okay. So never, you know what? You yeah, did, like, yeah, on the side. yeah. Never, yeah, yeah. never imagined that I would be... I was thought, oh, that'd be cool, but never thought about it. Like, I wanted to go to college, wanted to get my bachelor's degree, mm-hmm, wanted mm-hmm. to go to work the corporate life because that's a that's a part of life I've never seen. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. i never seen that represented in my life. Yeah, yeah. So yes. I want to go obtain that. So mm-hmm. it was never something I thought about doing, ever. Mm-hmm. So, like, in high school, did you have, like, a mean clientele or you oh, had, yes. like, a few people or by that time you had already oh, no, built I up had, a... She had to see your lock. Uh, it was to the point where mom was like, "No, girl, you can only do hair on, on the weekends." You was oh. doing at your, at your people house, correct? In, mm-hmm. in, the, in the in the den, <laughs> to the point where I had to sweep the hair, or it was gonna be in trouble in the morning. Yeah, for sure. yeah, I would be, it would be all day Saturdays and Sundays. Mm-hmm. So, like, who, like, when you started doing hair, did this start off like where you was like doing your family members? Then you went to like your closer friends. Then mm-hmm. it kind of just that's how I grow. Like, it started off with like my family members, mainly my first. Um, um, Mannequin, I guess you can say human mannequin, my sister. <laughs> uh, and then it grew to my friend, like one of my friend Tiana. She was always willing to be my mannequin, always willing to let me try something. Yeah. And then it just grew from there. And then like uh, I would have to say like my senior year in high school, that's when the sew-ins really became popular. I was just about to ask you, like, what was that maybe that that style that you did? That gave you the confidence, like okay, now I can start doing other. Because if I mess my sister have up, it's a kind of alright, you know. It ain't alright, but it's alright. But when you start getting into like other people, like was there like a like a point in time, you're like okay, I'm ready to start doing. Oh yeah, I yeah. definitely, I definitely have to say when I was like a senior in high school. Okay, and okay. I started when sewing really became popular, and I was like, oh mm-hmm. wait a minute, wait a minute. I can really make this look like it's growing out the scalp. Like, yeah. you know, I'm I'm really making this blend. I, I want to learn more about it. I'm making it look as natural as possible. Um. And then I also did the, I'm a numbers person, so I did the time it took me to do mm-hmm. a sewing compared to all day, 12 hours doing micros. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, that's true. Let, let's switch. Yeah. You know, the time that it took me to, let's say, I think back then, we're talking about, what, 2009, 2008, mm-hmm. I might have been charging $100 for micros. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was doing a sewing for maybe, what, $40 then? Okay. So the time it took me all day to do that, I could do, I can do two of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was, I was like, oh, no. So, you mean I can do, no, no, no. I started doing the math. I mm-hmm. said, oh, I can make, what, $150, $200 a day. I might as well switch over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's mm-hmm. what probably really made me switch over is once I realized I can make more money in a short amount of time and get more clients in. Mm-hmm. So, to kind of go a little deeper into it, like, because back then, I don't think you two, what it was, what it was what it is now so like how did you even learn how to do micros and sew-ins was it just like okay. i'm just gonna try stuff oh, yeah. well, like, so with the micros actually my cousin <laughs> did me and my sister micros okay. and sometimes they will fall out mm-hmm. in the middle. <laughs> and so i was like oh no 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 no! i gotta figure out how to put this back in so uh-huh. i would go in the back of my head and figure out how to put it back in uh-huh. and with the sew-ins like i would go to the beauty shop i mean i was still going to the beauty shop at that time i would watch them and see what they were doing and even though YouTube is not like it is today, it did have small, small, small things. Like you got Tierra, you had, um, what was her name? 
Anyways, it was two or three of them back okay, then. Okay, so it's still somebody. That, they had people yeah, out there putting content something out there. That yeah. had content out there. Yeah. It ain't like it is today. Mm-hmm. That had content out there, and I was like, oh, okay, let me try this. Yeah. And so after that, I just tried to, tried, you know, took off and was like, nah, I need to focus on this. Mm. And just started trying different things. Started creating mm. different things I thought that would work. So. Mm, okay. 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 So now we at the point where you go to college, mm-hmm. SFA. Shouts out to all oh, them. Oh, I was about to say it's a lot of them. It is. It's a lot of them. Excellent. So when you went there, like, did you already like? Was it kind of like starting over because you had built the clientele, or did you like? People, oh. A lot of people from your school went there too. No. So like, you already, or was it like kind of starting from scratch on like oh, a client? Oh yeah, phase? I, I didn't it think was, about that. It was completely starting from scratch. Um, um, I knew nobody there besides my best friend at the time, mm-hmm. and we knew nobody. So what mm-hmm. I did my first semester, I had business cards. Okay, okay they had for sure. my phone number on it. Mm-hmm. They were like purple and white. <laughs> and I lived in the female dorm. And um, it was so funny because I lived next door to a girl. And by the f- second month of school, you know, my room was busting with people. And yeah. they renamed it. I don't know if y'all cuss on here, but it was renamed Hood Bitch Hair Salon. Okay. Okay. Uh, if okay. you remember me back from Hood Bitch Hair Salon. You, Original. You, 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 you can ride for, for now. So. And after that, like, it just kind of took off. Like, it just, mm-hmm. I was always busy. It was to the point in college, I never really had a job besides doing hair. Yeah. It's got to be lovely. I only had maybe, like, two jobs. Mm-hmm. But like during the school year, I never had a job. I did hair. So how would you balance out? You just go to class and just schedule people around you being in class. Oh yes, I was very like um, I'm a very I'm a scheduler. So like oh, yeah, I knew sure. what time I had to be out. And um, so in the afternoon, I would only like during the week, maybe like one. But on the weekends, mm-hmm. on that Saturday, we would start from eight o'clock and we would run until I was tired. Dang. So like you hey. know, it was and I mean I had an assistant. Oh, for real? In yeah. college. Yeah. Like doing the scheduling and the calls? and No, she would thread my needles. <laughs> Look at my curling irons. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so, oh, man. Yeah. For sure, for sure. So now you get to the end of college, I'm pretty sure you done built up a name name for yourself at that point for doing hair. Yeah, I mean, I was very, like, well-known mm-hmm. on, on campus for doing hair. Um, but when I finished college, I was like, okay, hair was cool. It got me through school, but that's not what I want to do. You still wasn't at that point yet. No, I was like, okay, let's go, let's go be corporate America. Mm-hmm. I get that. Let's, I get that. I, I, I didn't work four and a half years for this degree. Let's go use it. That's mm-hmm. where I was at. Mm-hmm. Did it cross your mind to do hair? Try to do hair full um, time? Or no, it? but I was like, it would be ideal or it would be a blessing if it was a, a corporate job out there um, for me to um, get. That has something to do with hair. I'm like, oh, that would be cool. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, again, back to not seeing people work in those kind of fields, like mm-hmm. going, working in yeah. corporate. Mm-hmm. Like I grew up with, like my mama was a nurse. My my father worked in customer service. So I never really seen a corporate corporate America. Yeah, I never mm-hmm. really seen what a that? black person representing in corporate America. I don't know what mm-hmm. it is about it, but I want to go do that. Mainly, mainly because to me. Obtaining my degree was bigger than me. It was because, like, my ancestors couldn't do it. Yeah. Right, right. So, like, nothing was going to stop me from getting that degree, even mm-hmm. though it was times I'm like, it's mm-hmm. cool. Hey, listen, I'm making $500 a week. Now, back then, $500 a week was a lot of money. Ah, that's, some, that's some good scratch. That's what I say. I'm making $500 a week. I was like, no I can really quit this and go move home and do hair. But mm-hmm. it was, to me, obtaining my degree was bigger than me. And going into the workforce is bigger than me. Mm-hmm. So, I never really mm-hmm. thought about it mm-hmm. at all. Okay. Now, I want to ask you about this, because this is what I'm hearing, right? Sounds like you had like a goal in mind, right? That you had in your head, like, okay, this is what I want to do. But you also had a passion that was sitting right there in front of you. Did it was there any type of like internal struggle with you, like having a passion that you really mess with, that you really into, and having a goal that you like, okay, this this is what I think is right. You know what I mean? Was that a struggle for you, or what was the mentality? Um, I think I struggled a lot coming okay. out of college, and I think that to me that. You know, people always talk about obtaining your degree. That that's the hard part, but I don't think that's the hard part. Mm-hmm. I don't think what's talked about enough is that year after, that two yep. years after, <laughs> Come is, on finding, now. is finding where you belong. Yeah. yeah, after college, I feel like yes, I, It was a constant battle with me. Like I knew that I wanted to be this particular person, but how do I obtain it? Yeah, and I know that I was also it was 
it's a particular lifestyle I want to obtain. How do I get there? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. growing up as a granddaughter of somebody who worked in a beauty shop, like, only thing I ever seen was the negativity of it was okay. working long hours okay. and constantly relying on other people mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and paying both rent and mm-hmm. just negativity, never the positive. Never, I never was told that, well, you can make your own schedule. Yeah. Yeah. But also, sometimes I think that we as this young generation have to take in consideration how they were raised. Right, yeah. right, right. Like right. the things that we're able to do now, they weren't able to do. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it's mind bottling that we can do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I think that, like, I constantly battled, like, with, okay, yeah, I want to do this, but hair, I really could do this hair stuff. And then it would mm-hmm. also be about it because I was still doing hair on the side. Yeah, yeah. So I was still doing her own weekends. Even when you was doing, yeah, okay. I Even see. when I had, like, yeah. after I graduated college, because my degree is actually in fashion merchandising with a minor in marketing. That, so I was like, much. okay, well, I couldn't get, I ain't doing nothing with her, but let's step into my other side, which is fashion. So I'm applying for jobs, applying for jobs, thinking I'm going to be a buyer. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I ended up with a $12 job at Ross. Yeah. And that was, I was paid $12 because I had a degree. That's oh, wild. wow. That's wild. That's crazy. If I didn't have the degree, I think it was going to pay me like 11, 15, something. Now, mind <laughs> you, this was like 2014. Cent. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I was yeah, like, yeah. and then like working, I was like, damn, oh, excuse me, I don't know if I'm kissing her. Uh, be, be, um, be you, be you, be you. I was like, damn, I'm never going to be able to move out of my parents' house. That was where I was at. <laughs> no, you I'll, be, it be like that. Yeah, I was like, $12 an hour, because I'm quick with them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can do this. I can do one something. <laughs> Yeah. At the current going right at the salon. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to be here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it that didn't make me leave. Because I was still trying to chase that dream. That's interesting. That is so interesting. I still didn't leave. Yeah, that's interesting. So where did you go from there? So after I worked at Ross, I kid y'all not, I think it was like six or five days. Okay. And mm-hmm. after that, because I didn't have my weekend, I said, this ain't going to work. Mm-hmm. So my, I, I applied for... A pharmaceutical position. I was working in um, benefit verification. Uh, actually, it was the same place my that my daddy worked at. Oh, okay. He was like, just apply, Brittany. You never know. Mm-hmm. And so I applied. Got the job. It was Monday through Friday. I was getting off like at four. So I was still able to still do hair, mm-hmm. have to work, and on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was still a driving force in my life. And so I actually was on that. J- I worked. I ended up having like two jobs. I worked there for like three years. I ended up getting promoted like. Two or three times when I was there. But but I knew that wasn't my passion because in that last year, I prayed for God to remove me. Oh, okay. okay. I pray I prayed for God. I was like, literally, I hated that job. Give me I up the situation. I would get there at 7, <laughs> get up at 3.30, and I'd be like, God, no, this ain't God. I know this is not what you got for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know this is not why you put me on this earth. Yeah. yeah. And, sure. I mean, I prayed to God. I prayed to God. I was like, please, you know, tell me where I'm supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And so... um, that was 2018, September. I turned 27. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Brittany, you've been living life by the book your whole life. Right. Mm-hmm. Pretty much never taking a risk. Yeah. Pretty much doing what pretty much everybody has told you to do. What mm-hmm. they say is right. What yeah. they say is right. And mm-hmm. and at that time, I had went through a major life loss. Like, I lost my mother. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I was like, life can change at the drop of a dime. Mm-hmm. But no matter what happens, you can bounce back. For sure. Mm-hmm. So literally, it was... The same place I was getting my eyelashes done, she told me she had a booth. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was sitting in the parking lot at Walmart, and I literally called her. I was willing to risk all my savings mm-hmm. to see mm-hmm. what happened. Yeah. yeah. And so I literally called her. I got the key that afternoon, and I literally was sitting on my computer desk the next day at work, made my booking. <laughs> yes, on, 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 on the clock. On the clock. On me. That's how you do it. <laughs> I'm on the clock uh, making my scheduling book so I could work in the evenings on Saturdays. And I was like, if I have to work like a dog to get my dreams, mm-hmm. I gave myself six months. Mm-hmm. Okay. I said, I'm going to give myself six months working like a dog, build my clientele. If I got to go to my savings account, if I got to empty it out, I'm going to give myself a year. Mm-hmm. I really gave myself, I, I gave myself a year, but I gave myself six months because that was September. By that March, I was going to quit that job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That November, I got laid off. That's So that wasn't even six weeks. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't even six weeks, and God said, "Okay, will you finally listen to me?" If I say, mm-hmm. "I'm gonna remove it for you," you don't even have to worry I about say, it. Hallelujah! Yeah. Come okay, on now, you don't even have to. You don't, you ain't even got to worry about that. Man, mm-hmm. if I say He made the sit, man, come on, man, you ain't got to worry yeah, about that. Yeah, you sure. you listen to me. Yeah, you listen to me. Yeah, you listen to me from once. 
<laughs> and, and I'm gonna show you what can happen when you listen to me. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, for sure. like, literally, like, so literally, it's the day of they pulling people in, giving us our packages. I said, you ain't got to worry about me. You ain't got to worry about me. Yeah. I make them books full time. Yeah, I've been booked and busy ever since because that's what God had for me. Come on now, huh? that's incredible. We got to give us something for that, man. <laughs> we got to give us a head class for that, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's amazing, man. That's I mean, amazing. it's 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 a wild thing. Like, um, I love those stories. It's it's a wild thing. I never thought that I. Like, in my mind, like, you know how you be, like, young, you think, like, your wildest dreams, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, my wildest dream at 16, 17, 18, like, when I was in college, school, in high school, mm-hmm. was to have my own salon suite and be booked out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm here. Come on, man. I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> and it's, and like, I, sometimes I think people, I got to give credit because it's not me, it's God. Right. God, mm-hmm. God gave me the talent, so I tapped in where he told me to be. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Right. So once I tapped him where he told me to be, my cup has been flowing abundantly. Because mm. mm. that's where he told me to be. Man, she take me to church, man. Right. I'm about to say, church, no, 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 oh, no, no. We right where we right where we need to be. I'm about to say, yeah, we need to be. Sometimes, like, <laughs> sometimes I feel like when we have like sometimes with people, sometimes when they have success, they don't realize it's bigger than them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that because um, in my other job, I constantly battle like, why am I not succeeding here? Yeah, and then I also battle with I'm applying for other jobs, knowing I'm more than qualified. Yeah, why isn't that going? Yeah, yeah. that's because that's not what God had for me. Yeah, for sure. okay, I'm a bad job. I didn't, I didn't mean to come here and preach. No, 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 no. no. So people need to hear. No, no, no. Somebody gonna take a lot from this. No, that's your I'm taking a lot from this. Me too. too. Uh, I didn't mean like, to come on and preach, uh, but like, no, for real. I was willing to like, if that meant I had to move back home to be with my parents, figure it out, be with my father. Move mm-hmm. back home. That's what I was going to do because mm-hmm. I was going to try here. Mm-hmm. And whatever happened, happened. Mm-hmm. I could never wake up one day and tell my kids I never tried it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I can't, I, how, cause how can you motivate or tell somebody to go do, go do something and you, yeah. ain't never, you ain't never tried to risk it all on your own? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's true. Exactly. So, and I'm, and I'll, I hate to bring Zodiac signs into it because I'm like, girl, how you talking about Jesus and Zodiac? <laughs> but I'm one of them. Okay. <laughs> all right. Take us there. Take I'm us one there. of them. Take I just ain't got, I ain't got into the crystals yet. But I'm, I'm, got all those things out in the sun. Let them recharge. Yeah, I, I ain't got. I ain't got to recharge, and I recharge that Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you you know, I find that interesting because, like, when you talk to people like yourself, right, they have these talents, and everybody got a talent in some kind of way, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever they're good at. Like you think back to those times, like. Just for this podcast, like, me and Ed used to talk all the time, and, like, our friends, you'd be like, man, why y'all don't record that? We'd just be like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Here you go with the hair. I'm pretty sure you had people saying, like, man, Brittany, you should do this full time. I don't know why you still working. You know what I'm saying? And you had those conversations throughout your day. You know what I'm saying? That happened for two months. Then you had those moments to yourself. You're like, man, why am I? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why am I still dealing with this? Yeah. And, and that's the type of stuff that'll put you, push you to that list to either, you know, take that chance or... Do whatever else, but it'll literally like uh-huh. I really believe like sorry, I read this thing on Facebook. Not Come Facebook, on. Instagram. <laughs> Y'all I'm gonna refer to that guy because <laughs> that, that guy to keep on embarrassing you. Yeah. Until you move around on something. Come but on. But he can man. also keep on showing you yeah. something that's spot for you and where you're supposed to be at. Yeah, for I sure. I kept getting this confirmation from other people. Yeah. But something else that we don't talk about enough, I had to be confident in myself. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Because everybody else can see it for you. For you. But yeah. you have to see it in you. Come on. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, I kept seeing I'm yes, like, ma'am. well, I mean, yes, yeah, ma'am. girl, I can cut the blurs up. I can make that something look banging. Yeah. But not enough to leave that job that's only paying me this money. So, girl, go on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You come in, but that don't mean I'm going to get somebody every day in here five days a week. Yeah, for sure. But that's because I didn't believe what God had for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe God can make me live abundantly. Mm-hmm. Come on now. We just in the beginning stages, and also I think that people need to be patient with themselves. Okay. Because mm-hmm. it took me time to like, you got to think that was 2018. I got laid off from my job. It's it's 2022. I went through a pandemic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I mm-hmm. didn't had to find a new location in 48 hours. Mm-hmm. I've had clients uh, unpleased with services. Mm-hmm. I've had like any kind of random stuff. People text me one o'clock in the morning. 
Like, you can never predict this entrepreneurial life, hair seller's life. Mm-hmm. It comes at you differently. Every, every day is something different. But mm-hmm. when you're in a lane where you want to be at, mm-hmm. you just roll with the punches. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah, so because I, you know, yeah. I always talk to you too. You know me, I, I love me some stability. A poor, I love a good nine to five. <laughs> but I always said to you, though, like to be an entrepreneur, work for yourself, where it's eat what you kill. You got to yeah. kill every day. Like, yeah, you might, yeah, yeah, you know, do some hair here and make some money, and you'd mm-hmm. be like, oh man, I had a great week. Mm-hmm. But you can't just live in that. You got to because yeah, like, you can't, week, you can't get, like, ca- can't get, you got to rent the, the next month. You know, yeah, it ain't yeah. like. You know, yeah. when you work a nine to five, yeah. your check gonna be your yeah. check. You know, yeah. it's gonna yeah. come. That's coming in twice. A, you know, yeah. twice yeah. a month. Mm-hmm. So, I, for me, my question to you was like, what gets you out of the bed to like still have that mentality or like that go getter mentality? Because you got to keep that. Because so, like, what keep you motivated to like you know? Um, what keeps me motivated? I would have to say, like, I want to be real honest and transparent in this moment. Come on, Mary, because I feel like people act like, oh, every day I wake up happy. No, I'm an entrepreneur. Right. And I'm like any other human. I get burnt out. Mm-hmm. For sure. But I get burnt down and be three or four days later. I'm thinking about, well, if I turn my wrist this way, would a curl do this? It's, <laughs> it's my passion. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So I like fact, that. The fact that I get up, like, I literally, I can take a week off from work. I'm like, I've never been in a job where I was like, okay, I'm ready to go back. Yeah. It might get on my nerves, mm-hmm. but I'm ready to go back. Mm-hmm. 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 So once I knew I had that passion, it like, I think it's so cliche when people say, get you a job that doesn't feel like you're working. It all feel like you're working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you love what you're doing, the time goes by faster. Mm -hmm. Because you're pouring into what you like. Mm -hmm. Because even though I'm back there sewing and braiding, I'm thinking, well, if I do this differently... If I if I curl this differently, if I part this differently, I'm I'm getting different things every time. I'm learning, mm-hmm. I'm growing. You honing yeah. it, you honing I'm, your I'm honing, your I'm curl. figuring out yeah. where, where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. So for sure. if I feel like if you don't have that passion about it, you're not you're not gonna want to keep get, getting up and doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like sure. don't get me wrong, it'd be some days I'll be like, Lord Jesus, now why today? <laughs> yeah. And mind you, I make my own schedule. I don't yeah. go to work to ten. Yeah, and I still be like, Lord, I just want to watch Good Morning America. <laughs> but you know, it's the passion in me. Like eventually, yes. no matter what, I don't think I w- I would always want to some form of way be involved with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, go ahead, yeah. go, go ahead, go ahead. Because yeah, I always wondered that because I, I look at that and I'd be like, well, dang, where if you don't feel like going or, you know, like, because, mm-hmm. you know, you had those days working a regular nine to five. It's like, oh, I can go there and kind of like just well, man, more so just be there. But like when you do what you do, you can't just be there. You got to like be working. You got, And then also I feel like to me, like another thing that I've been so blessed with my clientele is your professionalism goes way further than your talent. That's what I was about to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like, yeah. Some, to somebody, I might be an average hairstylist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you book an appointment with me, I'm going to be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because I know you're relying on me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think it's also me having that accountability that I have to be there for somebody and I want nobody to do me like that. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. another thing that gets me out of bed. Now, on them other jobs, I can't say so much. Mm-hmm. But I've always been that kind of worker, though. I can't even lie. I was never the, oh, I don't feel like going to work calling kind of person. I ain't never been there. I, I would go sit at a job and I do nothing. Yeah. Before mm-hmm. I call in. So yeah. mm-hmm. you're gonna feel your obligation. I'm gonna feel my obligation. I don't know how much I'm gonna be working, but I'm mm-hmm. gonna be there. Yeah. You know, yeah. with, with with entrepreneurs, uh, you know, I look at it differently, right? You know, you know, Ed Ed is Ed is an X and O guy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he is. Yeah, he, he's an X and O guy. Energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh I'm a so I'm a lever, so I'm more like I want people to feel good. I want people to enjoy themselves, that type of thing, right? And I think when I think about entrepreneurs, I think what make it worthwhile, you know, the stability may be unsure at times, but what, what makes it worthwhile is that you completed that. You know, you did that, and you brought a smile to a customer's face. Like, you probably have girls and dudes that walk in there looking all kind of ways, but when they leave, they have this smile and this joy about themselves. They're like, damn, I look good now. And you be like, I did that. Mm-hmm. And I think that that gives, I think that's such a fulfilling thing for any. No, you know, for any, I definitely you know have to agree because, like, some days I'd be like, I don't want to be here. I'm tired. But when that client turns around, I turn around <laughs> and I turn around and she's like, oh, my God. I, like, I know that, that's a good, that got to be a great moment. It feels so good. Like, yeah. to feel that 
my hard work paid off. Like, yeah. Oh, I satisfied her. Yeah. I mean, mm. I've given her something she's never received before. Yeah, exactly. Like the fact that you know, I get clients that come to me. Oh my god, you shampoo. You care about the hair. You. Mm-hmm. You take your time. You're not rushing. You know, like it's the little things that mm-hmm. we realize. I also call them constant reminders that this is where God got me to be. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because the clients will confirm it for you as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So. Exactly. I feel like that. That and that is just like a manifestation, like you said, of your hard work. Like and you know that's a small moment yeah. when she turned him around and looked in the mirror. That, that see, I didn't that think about that. That it, happened in like a second. A second. Yeah. But like you see it, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to say yeah, because people' energy always be different once they get energy, their little haircut yeah. and their hair yeah. done. So I would imagine you being able to see that. Yeah, that, it's that, different. That it was like shift in energy yeah. every time. Energy yeah. Like, yeah. It's like wow, this whole time we've been taking the this. <laughs> now you like, sis. I be feeling, I be seeing them coming back in the form, and I know how it feels to come back in the form. <laughs> so the fact that the guy gave me this talent to bless other people to come in the form, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know, no, no. I just think that's a great feeling. You yeah, know, I didn't even think about it's that a, component need, of yeah, it. Like, yeah. And I think that's another, you know, another motivational thing. That's when you them know phones come out and that, that that hand start going through. Oh the yeah, head. when they be, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, they yeah. be cutting up, y'all. They be yeah. Up. You see, you see a lot of people walk out with a lot more confidence. Yeah, yeah. That, that walk be a little different. <laughs> that walk be a little different. When they walk in front of the mirrors outside, that walk be different. Yeah. I be like that. Yeah. yeah. I see you, girl. Go on and tag me too. You know what I'm saying? But you know, with jobs like that, somebody might say, Well, that's her job to say that, right? But as a hairstylist that really cares about their craft, you like, I want you to be the best you, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I want to give you the best product, which is, you know, which is this right here. And I could just imagine that that that's lovely. You know what I mean? It is. You know what I'm saying? That's a blessing for seven, for sure, for sure, for sure. So to help people that may be at the earlier stages of, you know, trying to pursue the same, you know, that dream, like what's like one thing that um, you didn't know and you, or you had to find out the hard way that you wish you knew earlier on when it came to like just working for yourself and like you know being a hairstylist um, setting your boundaries and saying no mm, I bet that is a hard thing like um, I feel like working in the service industry I mean that goes to like nail techs photographers hairstylists mm-hmm. caterers Mm-hmm. Anybody, eyelash techs, mm-hmm. people who do waxes, eyebrows, anything like that. I feel like a lot of times clients view that, oh, well, you need me. Or people, I don't want to say clients. Mm-hmm. Because people who do that, they can't be a client. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they view you as, oh, you need me. And mm-hmm. then when, you, when you're starting out, you constantly be like, oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're right, I do. And so then you lack boundaries. And yeah. then you looking up and you're working all day, all night. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, I don't have a life. Yeah, I really struggled with that in the beginning where I was like, it got to the point where I had to start resenting care. Like, I was like, oh, I got to go do this again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, I didn't even have time to enjoy it. Like, I was making this money. I didn't, I didn't have time to go enjoy it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I would say, like, make sure you set your boundaries. Like, you know, and be okay telling people no. Mm-hmm. Be okay with setting rules. Mm-hmm. Be okay with... um. If that client doesn't like it, I guarantee you're gonna get two more who do. Yeah. Um, but yo, I'm a firm believer in setting and staying firm on yours because mm-hmm. it's easy to waver, like mm-hmm. to waver. But if you stand firm, set your hours. This is what you do. This is what you don't. If somebody doesn't like it, they're not the client for you. Yeah. Yeah. They're just a the person. They're just a the body. Yeah, because yeah. I can but imagine I, that line blurring, and it's like oh, very. They, they forget that you human too, like. I got family I want to go see. I, well, I'm not just at the hair salon 24 seven. I'm not yeah, a robot. Yeah. I'm a human too. Yeah. I would imagine that that you know, yeah. Especially like you said early on, if you like, they hit you up at one o'clock in the morning, you responding and stuff. And I know we kind of had a conversation right. about that, or how like you almost was about to get like a second phone. Oh, yeah, so I you actually can, had to get a I to kind of separate line. it. Yeah, I have a business line now. Uh, mm-hmm. I had to because it was like mm-hmm. I feel like my thing about it is, and something else I had to another thing back to what I would do differently. Like a, appointment is an appointment. Mm-hmm. Now it, it might be extreme for me to say this, but you take off time to go see the doctor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You take off time to go see the dentist. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You schedule this a lot of time and now everybody works mom, but I, I have no problem. You can see So like, you know, mm-hmm. you're not going to call the doctor at eight 30. 
You're not going to call the teacher yeah. at 830. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The social worker. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. nurse. You're not going to call them. Yeah. yeah. So why do you feel like you can mm-hmm. do that to me? And I, But I also have to say that as service providers, you have to hold yourself professional. Because mm. I think that Dang. sometimes, like, we have, like, it's two way street. Yeah. Like, That's you true. can't throw criticism at clients and you, you can't take it in. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I've heard some wild stories yeah. mm-hmm. about, you know, come this, the kind of customer service people have received. Mm-hmm. And, like, I understand why some people treat people like that. I under, you know, mm-hmm. um, but you just have to set those boundaries. Those are very yeah. important. Yeah, I was thinking. Uh, if you if you accept everything, you're gonna get everything. You know what I Correct. mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So listen. <laughs> listen. If you accept everything, you're gonna get thing. everything. <laughs> Sorry, I had to point to the camera. Go ahead, talk to the people, man. <laughs> if you are starting, you know, giving services, any client that's gonna argue with you about your prices is not a client for you. Mm. Any client that wants to barter you or say that's out of their budget, you're not in the you, they're not in your price. They're coming out and negotiating stuff. Y'all not in the yeah, same yeah, tax yeah, bracket. Yeah, and that's sure. okay. It's that's somebody okay. out there for them. Mm-hmm. I promise you, like, as many times I was like, no, I can't compromise on my price. I, I've been blessed with more. Staying firm. Anytime I've risen my prices, mm-hmm. I've gotten different clientele along the way. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Come on So, now. you know, another thing. Oh, sorry. I'm on a tangent. No, 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 no go ahead. That's what, that's this what you. you market nice is ice what ice you up. attract. <laughs> You have mm-hmm. to know who you want to be your target market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I... Mm-hmm. You have to know who you want to be your target market. I know my target market. I know who I want to attract. Those are the services I provide. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. If there's a particular... Mar- and there's nothing wrong with whatever market you want, but find your niche. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Find your niche, stick to it. Because if you stick to it, people know you for that. Right. Because mm-hmm. people right. know me for a certain thing. Okay. I'm okay with that. Because mm-hmm. uh, that's what I'm good at. But know your niche and stick to it. Um... Now I feel like as service providers, you no longer have to offer every service. Because like a doctor, you, you know, yes, you might have primary care, but you have an OBGYN and you mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. orthodontist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These podiatrists, you know, mm-hmm. you have all these different doctors that specialize. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Find your specialty, stick to that lane. People will know you for that. Mm-hmm. Mm, I never thought about that. You could, yeah, you could refine sense. that. I, li- I really appreciate it. I like yeah, because find your niche market. And that goes across the board. That can go in any mm-hmm. any field. Like, mm-hmm. find your niche. Mm-hmm. Hone in on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Become excellent in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That way you can be top tier and nobody else can rival you. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you about this, right? Uh, because this, uh, this has been in my head for a little while uh, as you were talking in uh, weeks prior. So, like, Nowadays in like our modern society workplace, right, the gig economy is like a robust economy. Mm-hmm. Whereas before it was there, but it wouldn't I, I guess it wouldn't so advanced as as much as it is now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh I wanna ask you like the logistics of providing a service, how do you see it now as opposed to when it start when you first started? I guess I'm asking like with like Booking and what people expect you to provide and what you provide and, you know what I'm saying? Customer okay. service, like, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel like people back then looked at a hairstylist to do a certain thing then that they don't expect now? That yes. Type of thing. Okay. So, oh, yeah. I definitely agree. Uh, uh-huh. I definitely understand what you're saying. Um, I feel like when I first started, um, like, for instance, I'm going to put it in terms, like, when I was first started doing hair, I was working at home. So mm-hmm. I wasn't offering shampoo services. Right. Like, right, right. I wasn't offering it. But then when I moved to the salon, I was like... That's redundant. I should at least have it where it could be an add-on. Mm-hmm. Okay. So okay. you don't have to have it. Yeah. But if you wanted, you could add it on. Mm-hmm. Now it's standard. Okay. So you go. So you go and shampoo somebody. How, how Every it? time you come in my salon, okay. you go shampoo it. Okay. But that was me growing as a stylist. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Because I realized, like, how can I give you full on hair care if I'm not offering this? Yeah. Like yeah. that's not one. Of, and then it became a. Also noticing the market, noticing the trend. It became a very big thing on the internet. I don't want to say that's hey, what see, I see, see on the internet see, all the see, time. That's what I was about to very, roll into. It yes. became a very big thing on the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes things that become a big thing on the internet influences your business. Yeah. yeah. And you have to realize when to adjust. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to me, I was never opposed to it. I actually preferred when my clients did that. Mm-hmm. And then that's another thing I realized. Well, yeah, I'm going to offer it, but I'm just going to put it in the price now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, yes, service might be longer, but I'm getting paid for it. So mm-hmm. why not? And I can better monitor your health, your hair care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just feel like you have to like 
keep up with what this what's currently going on. Yeah, I was just about to ask you. I, I feel like as a hairstylist, you gotta like pay attention. Oh man, you the, gotta be man. tapped in, mm-hmm. like because that stuff changes. Yeah, and I think it's so hard, like gauging it. Like for instance, like when I first started out, frontals were heavy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I frontals remember, and closures were heavy, right? I, I remember that mm-hmm. wave. Okay, <laughs> I, I I couldn't get into the frontal wave. I got into the closure wave. I'm still mm-hmm. low known, barely, but I'm on known. <laughs> right now, it's micro link and tape ins. At this point, if I don't Michael Link, I might say that one. Yeah, see, you see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but these are, but see, as if you want to stay mm-hmm. relevant, if you want to stay current, uh-huh. if I want to keep making the money or making more money, I have to keep a track of the trends. Mm-hmm. No different if you work in photography. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If maternity is trending and they're doing it a certain way, mm-hmm. you gotta stay, mm-hmm. gotta stay afloat. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. you do an eyelash, it's like I know when I first started wearing them classics and hybrid. If you're not doing volume now, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. So you have to stay abreast on the trends. Like, that was yeah. like, for instance, I mean, I'm going to throw the tennis shoes, even though I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm not a tennis shoe person. But anyways, like, <laughs> dunks are trending now. Back when was, mm, yeah. more or less on the female side. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to stay uh, up with the trend. Mm-hmm. So I remember when ombre was a thing. Oh, ombre had the girls... Not Show everybody up. can do a good ombre either. Mm-hmm. No, but It'll be a hard ombre. colored man. Yeah. Yeah. It, it did not oh, transition like it was. You gotta, I do you gotta it's balayage now. Mm. Balayage. Man. Come on now. Foliage. Balayage and foliage. Mm. You gotta keep track with the trends. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I know. But you gotta keep <laughs> track of the trends. Like it's like even up to the point where now I can look at a bang and be like, Oh, we're not cutting it up there no more. We're cutting it lower. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like you, you have to keep a track of the trends. Yeah, you gotta stay abreast on your mark, on your industry. On my, yeah. and, it's, and it's kind of hard now because I never thought I would get here, y'all. I'm a little older than what I used. I'm 30, mm-hmm. and keep it like when I was younger. You in your 20s, you'd be like, "Oh, I know all the trends because you are the trend." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, you are the trend. You're you're making the trend. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Now you that setting I'm, them. You setting them. Mm-hmm. Now I'm 30. I'd be like, "Now wait a minute. They doing you this do now. This? They yeah. doing this now." <laughs> <laughs> Now, how do I make a reel? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how do how do I add music? I just want to let y'all know. It took me a year to figure out how to say music on Instagram for a reel. On a, on a business page, it's different on the business page. Okay. Okay. But it took me a whole year. Heck, I just learned how to to like, you know how you can like have people tag in mm-hmm. like a. like it's a blind swipe. But you, yeah, so you don't see, see it. it yeah. I just learned how to do that yesterday. No, yeah. I still like. Yesterday. I still yesterday. don't know how to like add the link where you can swipe up and go straight mm-hmm. to the. You gotta have 10k. Oh, okay, okay. I, see, okay. I don't even 10K. know what that I is. Say, that's why we were able to do it. I was trying to do it. Back on in the our day, page. back in the day, it used to be 10k on business pages. Okay. On business pages, it used to be you had to have 10k followers. So okay. Swipe up. Oh. Yeah, I had to go do when I first had my business page. I had to go do some googling. Okay, it's, I did. It's 10k. Okay, oh, okay. Because okay. I was trying to do it on the podcast page. I was like, oh, it's yeah, not there. Yeah, but, but, I was say, yeah, but I'm sorry. No, you fine. But yeah, though, no, that does make sense though, because whatever industry, and you got to keep up with what's going on, and and like. Think about it back then, right? Before, like, a, the real social media boom, things were a lot more localized. So there might be a trend in Dallas that's not really a trend Oh yes, in Louisiana. Like, you know what I'm saying? Correct, because mm-hmm. maybe them quick, quick phone tells that Dallas in the choke. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But now that things are a lot more globalized. Yeah, you know, the world then got smaller because of that cell yeah, phone. Yeah, so now, you know, I don't, that maybe that makes it easier. Maybe they make it quicker. But, you know what I'm saying? You got to pay attention to so many different things. Do you things. think that make it harder now? Um, I don't think it makes it okay. I don't think it necessarily makes it harder, but you bet you have to be confident. Mm-hmm. You have to be confident. If you're not confident, it can definitely be hard yeah. because you're constantly falling for oh new trend. Let me go learn. Mm-hmm. Oh. Let me go figure this out for my clients. Oh, my clients gonna want this mm-hmm. instead of being confident, knowing now nah, they're not gonna want that. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think learning and being confident in what you can offer as a stylist and mm-hmm. what knowing your niche market, knowing your clientele, I think that was that's more important. Okay. They're trying to catch you on every trend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like you know they got those like certain set in stone things. Like as a, if you know how to do this, you kind of always gonna be all right because everything maybe branches off. Whatever mm-hmm. technique this is, you know what I mean. I I imagine it's like that. Is it like that? I know, probably not. Huh? Not really, because oh. I mean, like hair. It's like so many different. 
scepters. Like you could really yeah. be in like this is like the natural hair style. It's a natural yeah. hair stylist, and she can be a natural hair stylist, but she don't do no dreads. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. She do nothing but flat twists. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And she yeah. can be a natural hair stylist. Mm-hmm. And she does everything. She might do scalp analysis. She might be a trichologist, mm-hmm. but she don't offer no color mm-hmm. because she feels like it's it's chemically altering the hair, so that's not being natural. Mm-hmm. Then you might get some natural hair stylists who be like, "Well, it is natural. You only have color in your hair, but we don't apply heat." So you have to figure out where you belong. Yeah. Like for instance, with me, I focus more on natural installs. So okay. I'm more on a silk press. Natural lace closures, natural uh, traditional installs, finesse some more services to align with my clientele. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I have to be realistic. My clientele don't work for them. Okay. I don't offer them. I don't install wigs. I you don't know make what? wigs. I don't, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. don't even tag me on that. <laughs> I like that because it's, also, it's almost like your philosophy on hair kind of influences what you provide, which makes sense. Yeah. yeah like, it happens, every, something else, everything has to make sense. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Everything has to make sense. Like, mm-hmm. Why would I stop? Like, be realistic. Why would I stop? I done went out of a sewing to mentally switch over to do a flat twist. That's not even, that's two different products. It's mm-hmm. just, for me personally, mm-hmm. it just doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a lot of product information, a lot of things that you have to learn. Let's like, no, it's just not for me. Mm-hmm. It's just not. Cool. Nah. I like that. I like that. I like that. So I think you done gave us a, a great, like, backstory. Okay. But to let people know now, like, what's, like, something you're working towards now? Mm-hmm. Okay, guys. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So, a few days ago, I finally put on my social medias that I am launching my own hair company. Okay. Hey. Okay. Clap. It is called Modern Hair Company. Okay. okay. Modern Hair for Your Modern Life. Modern Hair for Your Modern, modern Life. life. Um, mm. We're going to offer premium Cambodian raw extensions as well as Burmese extensions. Okay. 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 Um, We will be launching in March. March is actually March 12 years. I've been a licensed hairstylist. Okay. Okay. So I was like, it's crazy because I I wanted to launch it back on my 30th birthday in September, but (laughs) God, Uh you're doing things for your own purpose. Uh We're going to be launching in March on my 12 year anniversary. So it's coming. Um, You can follow our Instagram page. It is modernhair.co. Okay, okay. So you can Modern go follow us. Oh, excuse me. Mm. You can go follow us. And yeah, that's what I'm doing now. I'm looking to expand my business. I'm currently looking to take on an assistant. Okay. I'm also thinking about um I'm also thinking about changing my markets. I'm thinking about changing into a different city. Okay. Oh, okay, um, okay. But we'll see. Right. And okay. then eventually, like my my long term, we ain't gonna say long term because five. We're gonna say five years because I want to be able to reference this in five years. Um, I want to have my own salon suites. Okay, okay. That means like you got the building, you giving out booths. I'm and stuff, giving right? out the booths. Okay, okay, um, okay, okay. Yeah, so okay. that's my that's my end goal. Okay, no, for sure. So. Yeah. Hair company that's gonna take <laughs> off. We speaking it into existence. Hey, Amen. The manifestation. And then you're going to get your own salon. Yeah. At that point, you still think you'll be doing hair like yourself? No, at that point, I think it'll be time for me. Like, I wouldn't mind switching over more into, like, a a training mindset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. To, okay. like, you know, pour my information in. Yeah. And be able to op- just keep my own businesses. Like, keep mm-hmm. open up my own salon suites um, to get more away from behind the chair. Mm-hmm. I just feel like there's so much more to explore for me, like, I wouldn't even mind going more into formal education on the hair side. Okay. okay. Or um, I don't think I would necessarily open up a beauty school, but something like that. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, the plan is to have uh, salon suites in the new market city <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> here in Dallas. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, that's great. I mean, that's good to hear because, you know, somebody's going to hear this story, right? You know, there's going to be a young entrepreneur out there in any field and more specifically – a hairstyle saying like, man, we ain't got it going on. But what you just told them is like, you know, I had a story, I had a triumph, but like it doesn't stop here. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's still much more to good. And we talk about that a lot on the podcast. Like, I mean, yeah, you know, we reach good points in our life, but like we still look up. You know what I'm saying? We're man. still looking for that. We set that next thing for ourselves so we stay motivated and stay hungry and stuff like that. So it's refreshing to hear that. 
especially coming from you know a self-made person that's like yourself and uh you know I, I just really respect it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I it. I and I think, it. like I said, I think it was important for people to hear the journey because it's not like seeing the end product that make people motivated, like seeing somebody with a bunch of, because you don't yeah. understand how they got there and it just looks so unattainable. But mm-hmm. once you hear somebody's story and hear how they started off, because, you know, everybody people. can start off at their people house, you know, so mm-hmm. it just make it more like seem more attainable and relatable. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's why it's so important to hear like the journey on how like, you know, exactly. You didn't even think you'd be doing hair full time in mm-hmm. person, how you had to like get into it and take that leap of faith and like mm-hmm. everything that went into it. I think that's important for mm-hmm. mm-hmm. letting people know it is possible and you don't have to have everything, everything. to start, you know, cause mm-hmm. I know that was even the thing what we was talking about on the podcast. We was like, Oh man, we're going to have to, Make sure we have a fancy, fancy camera. This, the this, logo. This. We spent three weeks on the logo. And this, and it's like sometimes <laughs> you can get like you just gotta start. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you can put yeah, uh, paralysis by analysis, yeah. and sometimes yeah. you just gotta start. And like, yeah. I'm a strong believer, in the longer you do something, the better you are gonna get at it. If you like really putting the time in, yeah, 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 it's just gonna keep getting better and better. But it's just yeah. the starting part. And like sometimes people think they gotta have like the perfect situation yes. and have everything set up. Because mm-hmm. I know like. Heck, probably the, the stuff you use to do hair, you didn't have that when you first started. No. And yeah. the quality of stuff you have now, you didn't have back then. No. Yeah. It's just I like, mean, it was every day was learning. Yeah. yeah. And every day it was like, okay, what can we do to be better? Mm-hmm. Something else I would say for like um, people starting off their business legitimize your business. Yeah, yeah you're right. Like, it took me, I ain't gonna say how long. But it took me a long time to finally go get that business account. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. It took me a long time. It took me to it took quarantine uh-huh. for me to finally go get the LLC. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. Yeah. So, like, yes, Lord. I realized that if I want to be mm-hmm. accepted as a real business, I have to act as such. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. have to act as such so I can be as such. Like, people can say, I'm a business, I'm a business, but are you handling stuff on the back end? Yeah. Right, exactly. I want to be recognized as a business across the board. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when you become a business, there's more opportunities. Mm-hmm. Like I never realized like I grew up in a predominantly white area. And See. it was it was weird like seeing like my classmates like my oh yeah, my such and such my parents want a business. I was like Mhm. And it's already in there for. I was like, but how? Yeah. yeah, and so you know, unfortunately, we don't. Yeah, we majority don't. of us don't have that blueprint. Yeah, mm-hmm. but majority of us are just googling it and figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Y'all, I didn't Google, I didn't fit, and I didn't <laughs> made some mails. I just signed up from stuff I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, a, I'm, I'm, we gonna figure, but figure it out. Mm-hmm. Figure out what you gonna do. Legitimize your business because it's it's things and, and ways to get more funding to help you get streamline your business. Mm-hmm. So um, work. That's another thing I would say is. Once you realize, okay, this is what I want to do. I see this being successful. I see this growing. Mm-hmm. Figure out things that can continue to help make your business grow. Because mm-hmm. and don't be scared. I tell myself this: don't be scared to spend money on your business. Yeah, because it'll come back. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah, you so right. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I'm talking. You, I, and as my sister can tell you, I'm cheap. I'm super yeah. cheap. I'm super, super, <laughs> duper, <laughs> super duper cheap. <laughs> now when it comes like my clothes and stuff like that, I'm spending some money. Yeah. When it comes to my business, I'd be like, I, I didn't call three or four people. Mm-hmm. Y'all think y'all should do this? Mm-hmm. But then it'll be six months later, so I'll be like, why did I wait to do this? Yeah, like I could have did this six months ago. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah for sure. Sorry, I just want to make sure I said that. Cause. Oh, no, no, that's no. important. No, no, that's important. It's inspiring. You even, like, inspiring me, you know, because we're trying to get this thing off the ground. And, and, and don't be, oh, sorry, don't be afraid to hire help. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. You cannot do it all on your own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm having a very hard time accepting that, but there are things that you cannot learn on your own because mm-hmm. you won't have the capacity or the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You won't. Yeah. So please find somebody who can help you with it. Like I just had to hire a whole accountant. <laughs> who am I? Don't know. <laughs> uh, False. Yeah. But I had to hire a whole accountant because, yeah, big general. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just little thing. Like if you don't know how to market. Mm-hmm. And you like you to the point where like I can't do this no more. Mm-hmm. Find somebody in your price range that might can help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and somebody can just and even up. if there's and, and you ain't gonna be somebody to help you. Do the sponsored ads on Instagram. Yeah, they pushing it out for you. Yeah, you ain't even gotta push it out. Yeah. 
So it's just find little things, you know, yeah, to yeah. make it easier on you. Yeah. Is Instagram mm-hmm. gonna do if you pay them, Instagram gonna make sure it's on somebody's timeline seven days a week mm-hmm. or however long you run your campaign. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are tools out there for you to use. Go find them. So that's right, because we, we usually feel like we got to do all the leg work ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you'd be scared to spend the money. And then, yeah, that's what it'd be. And then when you finally spend the money and then you realize and you can use somebody else doing it, you'd be like, why did I ever do that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Or you realize the, the strain you put on yourself trying to do it all. When yeah. You could have mm-hmm. just paid somebody to do that. Now you got time to focus on other stuff. Now mm-hmm. I can focus on where I'm supposed to be focusing on. Mm-hmm. 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 Every man just try to be a one man army though. Right. <laughs> take a team. Yeah, it do. It do. It, it does. Do, it do. It do. That's what. what that, that's good to hear, uh, uh, Brittany. What else? Do, I mean, for people that want to live, in, what you do in your personal time? You just be chilling. Chat. <laughs> we, we just trying to get to I know. Mean, dude. We just trying to get pers- to my personal time, like, um, like. <laughs> hey. So, <laughs> hey man. <laughs> Ooh, <child. laughs> so on my personal time, like um I like to be well, I used to like to be in the streets. Okay. But okay, since we're talking about personal time, something else if you are a service provider that I don't think is um people need to also realize um you are the brand. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. though you provide a service, you are the brand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, when you go out, when you go into Target, when you're going out to eat, you go out to dinner, mm-hmm. you might not realize it, but somebody might know you. And you need to represent your brand no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. You need to watch what you post. I'm not going to say watch, but be mindful. mindful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Be mindful because... You want to make sure things align with your brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because what you put out there might be also what you attract in. Yeah. And you have to make sure that's what you want. Yeah. That makes sense. So, you know, um, I think that we you have to realize, like, it, to me, like, in the service industry, I don't know why, but people want to know just as much about your personal life as much as you can t- turn that curling iron. So mm-hmm. I, I think sometimes I battle with that because mm-hmm. I'm not a very uh, transparent, giving person about my personal life. I give you snips of my life. You don't just involve people in your stuff. Uh, nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Internet, real life, mm-hmm. I'm not very tell people what's going on in my life kind of person. So right, right, right. I feel like you have it's, you have to find the balance because some people are the complete opposite of me. They're oversharers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then people become more tuned into your page to see what you're doing with your personal life than they are with your work. Yeah. So you got to find that fine line and make sure you're attracting the right things. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I would imagine you talk to the clients while you Oh, doing their hair, baby, so. it's therapy in there. What you mean? Yeah, I feel it's like therapy. It's fun sometimes. I'm gonna be like, "No, nah, girl, you tell me what." I feel like there's like a doc, a doctor patient type of. I don't know what it is. Oh yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know what it is about that blow dry and me touching that scalp. They just open up. <laughs> they just open up. <laughs> but I will say this: like, I feel like um, every day when I meet these women, like, it's Ooh. so motivating. Because you meet women from all different types of backgrounds, mm-hmm. different type of jobs, different lives. It's just cool to meet. Like, there are so many different people in this world. I see. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. And, like, I just feel like every day I get to meet different people who own businesses, who work in corporate jobs, who I see them turn their customer service voice on. I'd be like, wait a minute now. That was the person that came in here for me. But it's cool. Yeah. Because it's also cool to see, because my clientele is predominantly black. It's cool to see that, like, how black women are just black women and just doing it. Doing it. Like, Mm -hmm. there's nothing better than a black woman. And I say what I say. I agree. I mean, I'm 10 toes behind mine. Okay. I said what I said. Just seeing them, like, and then how I can transform them, and it's just. Mm hmm. I make it even more than a bad it's, bee. It's out of this world. <laughs> but no, I, I feel like, not the heart, but like, that's what makes it so exciting mm-hmm. in a job like that. Because you wake up like, man, who am I going to talk to today? You know what I'm saying? Like, what story <laughs> are we going to hear Yeah, I'm about to say. Yeah. And when now, you sometimes go to... I'll be like, girl, we watching TV? <laughs> but sometimes I'll be like, no, nah, let, let me pause my YouTube. So, what, girl? No way. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I don't know. I, I just like that. I like to spawn, spawn, you know, not spontaneous. Yeah. That but that is, I would imagine that'd be cool to get to see, like, black people that look like you, but know it's like all different walks of life within us. Because, you know, a lot of people like to think black people are monolithic, but you, 
I know mm-hmm. you get to see all the time. Like, I mean, I different see different people with different, different types yeah, of black the whole people. spectrum. Mm-hmm. I see when I say the spectrum, mm-hmm. like, and some mm-hmm. of it be so motivating. Yeah, and then what's so what, another thing that became like crazy to me is when I became motivating to clients. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I started meeting, like when I started getting younger clients, mm-hmm. and I was able to talk to them, like, "Girl, not on, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Been there, done that, don't do that." Mm-hmm. Like, and then you know, for them to come back for me to get the update, and it's just different. Like mm-hmm. the fact that I can motivate and I can be motivated mm-hmm. at work, yeah, mm-hmm. mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Everybody don't get that. Mm-hmm. Nah, she didn't pop. She got people probably prepared for the biggest days of their life. You know what I, I mean? I do, and I be like, weddings. And, you want me to do your wedding there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, sis. You trust me. Wow. I'll I be, it's an honor sometimes. I'm about like, to say, that's a different type of session. It is, yeah. man. <laughs> it is. It is. Like, I'm like, wow, you, like, you view me that highly to pick me for that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. This look is about to be immortalized. Right. For like forever. <laughs> forever in a day. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But, um, hey, did you have any more? I'm sorry. No, I was just going to thank say, yeah. you again for coming on because. Of I know you gave like a lot of great insight. I like the details that you give, man, because I think this is important for people to listen to, mm-hmm. especially for like the hairstyles. I know a couple of uh, little cousins and stuff that are interested in. Let's just don't give up. Yeah. Perfect that craft. Mm-hmm. Work on it every day. Like mm-hmm. I'm licensed 12 years, but this morning I was on YouTube watching videos about color theory. See? There you go. Trying to figure yeah. out how to cancel out orange and red undertones. So it's like. See, that's somebody. That's somebody talk. That's yeah, that's that talk. talk. Right there. Hey, that, like, that's a different cloth, man. Like, that's you never. Because I realized I got to go get green uh, green toners. So I was like, green. Okay, I gotta. Anyways, so it was like, you never, never stop learning. Mm-hmm. A stylist who's always learning. Not, not even say stylist. A person who's always mm-hmm. learning is going mm-hmm. to be top. It's going to be top tier wherever they are. Mm-hmm. So never stop learning where you're at. So. Mm-hmm. I know me and A always say the consistency, like and you know be consistent. <laughs> the consistency. Mm-hmm. That's something like I often post on my Instagram. Like when mm-hmm. I post stuff, I'm going my caption just gonna say consistent. Yeah, yeah. Every time you come, you gonna get a flawless install. And sometimes another thing, to your own horn. Know you that bitch. Talk that talk. Be that bad bitch Jesus made you. And no matter what it is you in. And I, I mean, and be that good man God made y'all. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. I haven't, I haven't it. figured out how to convert it yet. I'll take it. I haven't figured out how to convert it yet. But, um, but yeah, like, you have to be confident. You could have missed that girl. Mm-hmm. But be confident. Be like, girl, you fine. But please go do your original figure out to fix it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you don't do it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, always constantly correcting yourself. And I love it. I can mm. I can hear you talk all day about this. Wow. Uh, so Screaming! Because when somebody really in something, yeah, you know when you listen to somebody they're like, okay, they just kind of putting on the front, but then you talk to somebody that actually like dudes like they do that. Yeah, you can tell when it's passion. When it's passion, yeah. Mm. When it's, mm. yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I think I'm passionate. I think I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes I feel like I be like, damn. I'm, I mean, excuse. Oh, Lord, I no, go ahead, me. go ahead. I just be like, <laughs> <laughs> I be like, okay. Sometimes I really be like, I think people see it bigger than I do. Mm-hmm. And that's something yeah. I don't know. I yeah, be on that Instagram, mm-hmm. so I think it's called what the imposter syndrome. I don't know. I might have threw that a label on me, but mm-hmm. I think sometimes I have, I suffer from that because mm-hmm. I be like, oh, you really feel that way about me? Oh, you really think I can do that? Mm-hmm. And then when I do it, I be like, oh, you snap. <laughs> oh, you snap. Yeah, for so, sure. Know, for sure. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Well, yeah, I, you know, I see when those books open and then they fill up instantly. Though it's the Hunger Games. That's what me and my clients call it, the hunger games. For real? Correct. I would just, man. It's actually, I'm very high and feel with anxiety about it. Matter of fact, today is the, okay, we got a few weeks. We got two weeks today. I'm back up for April. But, <laughs> like, the I'm blessed because, like, my whole March is booked out. Man. Like, I pray for this. Yeah. Pray for it. Yeah. God, and also, when you pray for it, ask for God to give you patience. Mm. And prepare you for the journey because, it was some stuff that that was thrown at me. I was like, now, wait a minute, Jesus. Now, you ain't tell me nothing about this. Mm-hmm. You, you ain't tell me nothing. So it was just, you know, get yourself ready because it's a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. And wherever the next part of life might take you. Take you. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I love hearing about the real, like, the real moments in life when people make that shift. Mm-hmm. Like, when you, I don't know, like, this is sticking with you. It's going to stick with me. Like you in the Walmart parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
it's so minimalistic. You know, it's just you. That's when you really talk to yourself, talking with God. You're like, no, I got to make this decision. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was a defining moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it what I'm saying? Those, those little things. And nobody else saw that. No. You didn't even have to tell us that. You know what I'm saying? But you knew that was something for you, you know? And those be a real moment. They be a real vulnerable moment because not only you being vulnerable, you know, to God, but you being vulnerable with yourself. Like, no, nah, I got to do something different. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I got to make a change and, and it'd be hard for people to have that conversation with some themselves. people run from it. Mm. Some people run yeah. from but it. They know they don't like what they're doing, but they just yeah. But they don't want to step out on that. that running mm-hmm. from it is slim, real. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's been some things in my life I should have went to God about, but I knew that mm-hmm. I wasn't gonna like the answer. Mm-hmm. Man, but, I say that all the time. Man. But man. Um, man. when you get fed up, you finally be like, "Let me see what Jesus is gonna tell me," because he ain't gonna lie. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So let me sure. go. Let me go holler at him real yeah. quick. Let me go sit down. Let me go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and when I tell you he, he, When he When it's <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry y'all I got a testimony But that's the subject For another day mm-hmm. uh, Hey man He'll tell you mm-hmm. Just Your thing is to listen yeah. yeah for sure You know Ask for God's voice To be clear too Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, we think I was on a religious podcast, baby, because I'm throwing this <laughs> no, sprinkle of Jesus head. I need to be sprinkle of Brittany. We believe us. We, we believe us. Yeah. We believe us. So, I mean, you, you good, man. And so, yeah, I just feel like God going to tell you where you need to be. And that's mm-hmm. nothing. I think people be like, oh, I'm automatically no. no I was 27. <laughs> I had been licensed nine years. Mm-hmm. Nine years mm-hmm. before I finally realized, like, all right, let me tap in. Mm hmm. So, you know, be patient with yourself. Be yeah. patient yeah. with the process. Yeah, I got to sure. say, it's a journey. A journey yeah. don't happen overnight. No. no, it doesn't. It's a long time. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, man. And uh, I'm pretty sure you had a support system with you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's talk about support. Yeah. Your closest people sometimes might not believe in the journey. Okay. Um, some will. Like, for mm-hmm. instance... My best friend and my sister, mm-hmm. when I got laid off, oh, they said, oh, well, thank God. <laughs> you can go do her. <laughs> That's what you been want to do. Thank God. Yeah. Meanwhile, I had my, my daddy and um, my aunt sending me job applications. Mm-hmm. Almost six months after I had got laid off. Mm-hmm. And it literally took my daddy almost 18 months. So he really, he's like, so, you know, where you getting clients from? Mm-hmm. Oh, are they returning? Mm-hmm. I mean, eventually I had to excuse him because we come from different backgrounds, you know, yeah. different lifestyles, mm-hmm. different upbringings at this point. Mm-hmm. So I had to excuse the behavior, but somebody you thought would have been, go ahead, girl. Mm-hmm. Was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying, like, some people, they don't, they can't wrap their mind around the whole entrepreneur lifestyle, no, especially if they even, always had a nine to five. Correct. It even, older generation. Yeah, it's that, mm-hmm. but no, I will say this. Even my friends, like, being an entrepreneur can be lonely. Yeah. Like even like I will never forget this. Like one time we were out 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 on on the beach out out the country, Jamaica, Mexico, somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what it is, but my mind is always running about my business. Mm-hmm. And I was just talking to him, and I I would ask my sister and him. I was like, "What you think about this name?" They literally told me we on vacation. Don't nobody want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I lucky got in my feelings, but then I later on processed it. You're right. It's God didn't give them the vision. Mm. So why would they Why would they be thinking about it on vacation Right God gave you the vision So you yeah. gotta tap into it Come on now So you, you see what I'm saying Like yeah. Everybody ain't gonna understand Why you do this Or why Why you Why you thinking about it And you drunk on Beach in Jamaica mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that's cause you was giving the vision <laughs> Yeah for sure yeah. So For sure yeah. It's yeah. that you passion know, yeah, You gotta passion. keep pushing It's really mm-hmm. on your heart Yeah mm-hmm. Yeah Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, that's good, man. Shoot, man. That's been a good episode. Yeah, it is. But no information. But before, like, is the you know, do you want to you know to the people that's listening, you know, you got where you can be reached at. Oh yes, y'all can follow me on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's Brittany, but let me spell it for y'all: B R I T T V as in Victor, N Y Nicole, two E's. I'm gonna run that back. I'm gonna spell it: B R I. T T V N Y N I C O L E E. And give them the uh, hair page too. Oh, the hair page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's modern. Let me spell it. Look, hold on, hold on. Let me pull it up because y'all need. Yeah. We gonna put it in the bio too. Yeah, 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 yeah. We gonna we gonna get you yeah, to okay, in the bio. Okay, hold on, hold on, y'all. I'm, uh, we gonna cut this part out. 
I'm really pulling it up because I just oh, made yeah, Instagram page. Yeah. Nah, but I'm saying I'll be, I'll be <laughs> out here. Yeah, it's new. Yeah, 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 yeah. You good. Okay, yeah. so it is modernhair.co. So M O D E R N H A I R period C O. And we're going to put both of them in the bio too. Please so you can just it's just Instagram or website? It's too. Instagram. Website will be posted in about two weeks. Okay. So, yeah, if you follow the Instagram, you'll, you'll get be all notified. Information. Yeah, you'll I'll be just clarify. Yeah, yep, yep. I appreciate that, though. But the website is modernhairco.com. Okay, okay. And we'll be sure whatever episode we do, we'll just. Yeah, yeah, we're going to. We're going to shout y'all. We're going to shout y'all. Yes, 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 yes. So, yeah, so. we got big things coming. I'm so excited because it took me time to get here. I'm yeah. excited, bro. I'm excited for yeah. it. I, me too. I'm, heck, I'm motivated. I'm about to say, let me know when the, when the, when the stuff drop, man. We coming. Listen. Yeah, I'm about to say. Yeah, I'm about to say, you might have to come back on and tell them yeah. how that journey yeah. was. Yeah. So yeah. We can do this. <laughs> for sure, we, for sure. We can do this. Yeah. This has been episode 55 of the Transferable Experience Podcast. Remember to do all the things on all the things. <laughs>